production of this program was made possible by the John Templeton Foundation and is a co-production of The Ohio State University, COSI, and WOSU Public Media. Good evening and welcome to In the Beginning, Explanations from Science and Religion. I'm Neil Conan from NPR News and Talk of the Nation. We've gathered at the Battelle studio at WOSU at COSI to talk about the tangled intersection of faith and evolution. We'll hear from a distinguished panel about their views on how the universe and life began, how they changed, and maybe even why they've changed. Dennis Lamoureux is, holds degrees, earned degrees in dentistry, theology, and biology. His appointment at St. Joseph's College is the first tenure track position in Canada dedicated to teaching and research on the relationship between scientific discovery and Christian faith. He's the author of several books on the subjects we'll be discussing tonight. Eugenie Scott has been the executive director of the National Center for the Science Education since 1987. She's a leading critic of creationism and intelligence design. Brought up in Christian science by her mother and grandmother, she later switched to a congregational church under the influence of her sister. Scott is now a secular humanist and describes herself as a non-theist. In 2005, Scott and other members of the National Center for Science Education staff served as consultants for the plaintiffs in the Kitzmiller versus Dover Area School District case. Judge John Jones ruled against teaching intelligent design or creationism in the public schools as a result of that trial. Our next panelist, Francisco Ayala, was a member of the U.S. President's Committee of Advisors on Science and Technology from 1994 to 2001. In 2001, he was awarded the National Medal of Science at the White House. In 2003, he was appointed university professor, the highest title at the University of California, and he's currently the only professor holding that title at the University of California, Irvine. He has a long list of honors and achievements to his credit and has authored several publications. There's one especially intriguing title that we will no doubt discuss tonight, Darwin's Gift to Science and Religion. So let's begin the conversation, and Dr. Lamoureux, let me turn to you first. You're a proponent of evolutionary creation. What is evolutionary creation? Well, it sounds like a contradiction in terms, doesn't it? And the reason that is so is most people, when they look at this discussion, they set it up in a dichotomy. In other words, it's, you're either on the atheistic evolutionary side or you're on the young earth creationist side, the world is created in six days. I use the terms the way professional theologians and professional scientists use it. So when I'm using the word creation, the professional definition of it is simply this. The world was made by a creator, period. Now, when I get into the lab with my scientific colleagues and do some evolutionary biology, when we look at evolution, we simply see evolution as a natural process by which all forms of life emerge, period. So an evolutionary creationist is someone who is first and foremost, the noun, creationist being the most important term, one who believes in a creator, it just happens to be that the process is through an evolutionary one. And evolutionary creation claims that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit created the universe and life. Any evidence for that? Um, that would then be a, that would be a religious statement to say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That would be a distinctly conservative Christian position, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, to talk about it being scientific evidence, no, it's a religious statement of faith. Um, when it comes to evolution, it is simply a natural process, and I'm going to do this again. Period. Okay. Now, whether there's a God behind it or whether someone wants to make a commitment and say there is no God, that indeed, if you wish, is a religious statement, or I've got to use the technical term, a metaphysical statement. So we, we, we look at evolution, and there's different ways of packaging it. My, my basic challenge, ultimately, would be to folks like Richard Dawkins who want to package evolution as being atheistic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a step beyond the science. So an evolutionary creationist is definitely a conservative Christian who's looking at evolution and seeing it as God's process. Dr. Scott, and this is a question I'm going to come back and ask all of you, uh, but Dr. Scott, was there a turning point that changed your mind about creation and what convinced you that God was not the explanation? Oh, goodness. <laughs> um. No. <laughs> I, I can't think of, of one. I don't think anybody's actually ever asked me that before, Neil. No, um, first of all, um, I grew up in a, um, in a, in a liberal uh, Protestant uh, church environment. 
very much enjoyed uh, going to church, enjoyed singing in the choir, felt it was a very comfortable sort of place. Um, I don't know, I guess I just gradually drifted away from, from faith. Um, I think I just became interested in different things. Um, I became a scientist. I don't believe it was science that turned me away from faith or anything like that. You don't see any contradiction between the two? No, I don't. Um, faith, religion, uh, well, first of all, I, I, should, I should, you know, people can get tied up with definitions, but definitions are important because what I might mean saying a term may not be what you will hear. Uh, you may have a different definition. So you have to remember that I come from this toward religion from an anthropological standpoint. And, and when I'm thinking of religion, I'm trying to think of a definition that would work not just for all the different forms of Christianity or, or not even for all the Middle Eastern monotheisms or not even for world religions, but something that would work for, for the Hopi or uh, tribal religions, so something that, would, that could be used across the board to, to uh, describe this extremely important human practice. And, and basically, to me, religion is the set of ideas and practices and beliefs that, that relate human beings to a non-material reality. Uh, we, we live in a material world, a matter and energy world, and we all recognize that. Most human beings believe that there is something other than a material reality that, that they can interact with. And it can be where it can be the home of God or the gods or the ancestor spirits or whatever your tradition is. Most human beings believe there is uh, an existence, there is a reality like that. A minority of human beings, probably in every culture, probably back there in the caves, there was somebody thinking, I don't think so, but mm -hmm. you, know, you don't mention it too often in, in most societies. That's right, go um, along to get along. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or you get put on an anthill somewhere, and so you, you <laughs> sort of don't. Th th this is a much better time to be a non believer than probably any other time in human history. But religion doesn't speak to everyone. Religion does not speak to everyone, but it does speak to our next guest, uh, Francisco Jose Ayala. And let me ask you, uh, some people find a contradiction between faith and belief in evolution. Do you? No, I don't. Um, I uh, think that faith or religion and evolution or science are like two windows through which you look at the world. You are looking at the same world, you are seeing different things. Uh, Science has to do with natural explanations, with the process that account for the natural phenomena. Religion has to do with the meaning of life, with or purpose of life, with life perhaps after death, moral values. These two things don't need to be contradictory at all. Um, as perhaps you may know, uh, and it may shock some others who do not know, uh, not only I don't think that there is opposition in particular between evolution and religion. I think evolution is quite compatible with religion, while these ideas which are go under the name of intelligent design and creationism are not compatible with religion. They are being well, go ahead. They are being proposed in the name of religion by people who either do not know enough theology or do not know enough science. In both cases, they do not know either one very well. The implications of intelligent design for religions are disastrous because if we have been designed by God, God is a very incompetent engineer. <laughs> you know, we have a jaw which is not big enough for all our teeth, so we, they have to pull the wisdom teeth and they have to straighten the others. Um, the but if I can interject, I practiced <laughs> dentistry for 25 years, and I made a lot of money on wisdom teeth, so I'm grateful for that. <laughs> well, so you should, you should thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe God just like the dentist. I actually wrote a dissertation on teeth. So, oh, <laughs> so this is, good on teeth. Uh, let me then shift to another example. I, uh, there are plenty of examples from yeah. uh, implying humans, I mean, the birth canal of a woman is not big enough for the head of the baby, if associated with the same process as the one of the teeth. That but the with respect, can you, can, you can pick out body parts, and as you know, the, the creationists pick out the human eyeball and right. say this is a perfection of design which could not possibly be achieved any other way. The perfection of the eye, mm -hmm. <laughs> other than by design? Well, you only have to look at uh, mollusks, you know, which include the, the, sne 